If you're starting out your career as a mobile developer, you might be thinking, what should I learn? Flutter or the Android SDK? Or iOS, I don't know. That's a fair concern to have due to the fact that both are made by Google and uh, one is native, the other one is not. Well, Daddy Google will hold both their hands for some time, so they're not to go anywhere, none of them. Before we can figure that out and answer the question, we have to define the terms. We have to know what each of them are made for. Android SDK, with Kotlin as the JVM preferred language, are made for making apps for phones, TVs, cars, and whatever else, watchOS, you name it, but on the Android ecosystem. Therefore, it's made only to fulfill the Android needs even though they are really broad. Flutter is made to have a more wide platform compatibility, but not as much specificity. With Flutter, you can make apps for Android, iOS, Linux, macOS, Fuchsia, and the web, provided they are not really good. If you want to make an app to be compatible with some of the platforms listed uh, in the Android ecosystem, be ready to learn some Kotlin or Java, because you cannot really get away with uh, Dart here. And here we can properly start the discussion about specificity. And by specificity I mean how low can you go? And by low I mean low level code to have access to some of the device's features that you probably don't have with Flutter. If you imagine this like a tree, with Kotlin and uh, the Android SDK, you can go lower in the tree, basically like depth first search. But with Flutter, you can go breadth first search. You can touch any platform, but uh, you cannot do amazing things in those. This does not actually mean that you will ever have to use... That doesn't mean that you will ever have to go this deep to explore low-level functionalities of this app. Basically, if you are asked specifically to go to do some low-level work for Android or iOS, you probably already know what you're doing and uh, you know your tools about this. This is not for you. With Flare, you won't go deep or should I say with Flare alone, you won't go deep. You will have a lot of um, possibilities and you will be able to do an amazing app, but in the comfort of the canvas you're given when the user clicks on your application and also some good notification support. But when you want to go deeper, you will have to use some Kotlin or Java. This is true platform channels, a concept that you will come in familiar very soon after you stumble upon some low-level stuff that you have to do. And remember this point because uh, it will come in handy later. Now you found out that Flutter has some limitations. You can't do widget on the home screen, you can do watchOS apps, but I don't think this is the problem. Well, you see, 95% of the applications are just a UI to a database that uh, shows the data, changes the data, and at the end of the day, you spend 95% of the time you use on your phone, or should I say your mobile device, using these kind of applications that are just a cute UI. And that's definitely something you can do in Flutter perfectly. Just think of Instagram. Instagram can be done 100% in Flutter, from the camera usage to filters to the newsfeed itself. The hardest part about it would be for stepping on a post to preview it, and that can be done with a library that takes five minutes to implement. So yeah, UIs are not a problem. But for example, you wouldn't be able to do a sleep tracker only using Flutter. Or not as straightforward as you would think. <laughs> I really don't think what I'm going to say is gonna be controversial, but if you want to build an app that performs perfectly, does mostly anything you want and has 95% of the features that a native app would, that is available on every major platform, Excluding the web here for a bit because that's just bad? You're probably safe going with Flutter. 
You may even have cases where 100% of the app can be done in Flutter without using anything native related. That's just the nature of the app and I cannot predict that, but yeah. You will find the solution to your native problem that you're having in Flutter once you stumble upon it. You don't need to know anything before starting out. And to be totally fair, that will be after two or three years of development, so I don't think you should worry about that yet. If you want to have the best outcome possible, my advice would be to start making apps in any platform you have at hand right now, or anything you like right now. Maybe you like Flutter's marketing, maybe you like React Native, do any of those, or even iOS or Android native. You will slowly start to figure out after some time what you want to do, what kind of apps you want to build. And you will know what path to take. Do you want to make highly optimized apps? Do you want to make apps for watches, TVs, cars? Awesome! Go with native, have some fun, explore. I can assure you, it will not disappoint you. It will be a bit hard, but it will pay off. You want to get as many people to use your app? Do you want to get 95% of the freelance gigs? Do you want your apps to run also on iOS, computers or anything else? Then it's simple. Go with Flutter. So finally, to answer the question from the title, will Flutter replace Android? Well, no. Until Fuchsia OS does not conquer the world and uh, we are all coding in Go and Flutter, you're safe. Choose whatever. Also, that won't happen soon. <laughs> By the way, if you want me to make a video about Fuchsia OS and uh, how it's doing right now, leave a comment. I think I'm quite excited to do some research on it. Also, I told you to remember a point I made earlier. Here's why. The ideal scenario would be that most applications would be written in Flutter because the coding time is diminished drastically and the result is as good as native. Most developers would be fluent in Flutter. They would make 95% of the application this way and when the harder part comes on, they would grab out the old skills in Kotlin and Swift and start making the harder parts. This way, we would have the best of both worlds, where development time is low and uh, compatibility is high, and the features are implemented correctly. So, if you stick till the end of the video, thank you. You can leave a like, a comment, a sub, and I'll see you around. Bye!